Yesterday at the dyno, everyone was giving me a hard time because I haven't verified my timing in a while. Last time I verified timing on this motor is in my Camaro, which was two years ago. It was on Mega Squirt, and it was reading two degrees off. So my timing was soft, two degrees. And when I got this whole combination together, I did verify time timing again, but just really quick. I mean, I spent five minutes on it. And it looked like it was dead on. So I was like, oh wow, so it's dead on now, but it was two degrees soft before. And I think that might have been me lying to myself and I should take more time on it. So today I'm gonna tear into it. I'll show you guys how to verify timing. And we'll see if, how much I left on the table at the dyno. From the plugs, it looked like it could have used a few more degrees. And you could tell by how much smoke was coming out of the exhaust. It was running a little rich. I was playing it safe and I was pussyfooting around and it kind of bit me in the ass because I was on the dyno from like 9.30 in the morning to 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And Josh finally just looked at me and was like, dude, we got to make some freaking changes. So <laughs> I started cranking up and we started making some power. I kept pussyfooting around being scared and she liked it. It sounded better making over 900 than it did at 500. So I think once we take it to the track, We'll keep reading plugs and keep leaning it out, seeing what the heat mark is, and then add a little timing in it and see where it's at. And then I'd like to go back to the dyno and see what it makes. You know, I have no doubt in my mind when my tune-up cleaned up a little bit that it'll make over a thousand. So I'm pretty happy with it, and I'll tear into it and we'll see where it's at. Most cars probably aren't this way, but. My car, the way it's set up, the uh, radiator fan is right in front of the balancer. And it's going to be really difficult to get in there and ch uh, turn the balancer when I need to mark the balancer for top dead center. So instead of jacking with it, trying to get some extensions and swivels in there, I'm just going to go and pull this radiator out and give me a bunch of room so I can have plenty of room to mess with it and I think it'll be faster that way and easier. So I'm going to get on that right now. This is that piston stop. You screw it into the number one cylinder and then you turn it one direction all the way till it hits and stops. Then you mark the balancer. Then you turn the motor over the opposite direction until it stops, mark the balancer. And then you mark your timing mark directly in between those two marks you made. And that is true top dead center. And that's where you're gonna to have to have a pointer. You can get pretty fancy with your pointer. And I had a nice one I had all welded up. But I'm kind of in a rush today. I just made this with a bolt and some TIG rod. I'm gonna use this as my pointer. Anything that's straight that you can bolt in the side. There's a hole a threaded hole perfectly down here in the side of the block that you could screw a pointer into. Now there's these pointers, you're going to have to put a little bend in them like a little kick over to get to get really you want to get as close as possible to the uh, to the balancer this hose is a little bit in my, in my way so I want to get direct line of sight to where my pointer is going to be so I can easily see it all right, so what I do is I screw in the piston stop all the way, and I turn the balancer all the way clockwise till it stops, make a little mark, 
turn it all the way counterclockwise until it stops, make a mark, and then measure between those two marks, and directly in between those two marks is top dead, uh, top dead center. And you can see right on my little pointer I got there, there is a mark there right behind it. And then I'll show you guys in the software how to set it up. Uh, each ECU is a little different. Uh, my Mega Squirt was pretty simple to do. Holly's pretty simple. I'll show you guys on my Holly because that's what I have now. To lock in your timing and you just hook up your timing light. Get down here and point at that sucker and see how far off you are. So I'm going to show you guys how to lock your timing out to verify your timing. This is the Holly software. It's pretty simple. You go over here to the idle menu and you disable idle spark. Idle spark is what tries to keep your idle smooth at your set idle speed, wherever you have it. It'll adjust timing up and down, up and down, trying to keep it smooth at that number. So you just disable that. You go to your spark table and you have to set this to whatever it'll take to make it idle. Each car is different. Mine idled pretty smooth at 20. And then it idled pretty smooth between 20 and 25. But your car may be a little different. But just mess with that till it idles smooth enough to where it'll run. And you can get down there and check timing. And just set your timing light or whatever uh, timing number you put in your table. And see how far off it is. Luckily mine wasn't off so that's pretty cool. So I verified my timing, I locked it in at 20 degrees on the Holly software and it was dead on. I locked it in at 25 degrees and it was dead on. So I wasn't soft like everyone was thinking I was, which is pretty cool. I'm glad that I wasn't leaving a bunch on the table because they all thought I was a couple degrees soft. But uh, Joey, he checked my plugs, he's good at reading plugs, he said that's about where he runs them on the heat mark. So I'm doing pretty good on timing, now I just need to figure out why I was smoking so much on diesel, and I'll dig into that more and we'll go from there. But we now know that my timing is verified and it is dead on and we are good to go.